Today, I wanted to show you how to solve uh, collision problems in two dimensions. So this will be 2D collisions. And the specific collision we're gonna look at today is the perfectly elastic collision. So let's say we start with a ball of mass m1 moving at a velocity v1 initial at some angle theta1 initial below the horizontal. And it's going to strike a ball of mass m2. This is our initial picture and mass 2 is going to start at rest so v2 initial is 0 and then in the final picture mass m1 is moving up at some angle theta 1 final and mass M2 is moving at some velocity V2 final at this angle theta 2 final below the horizontal. So let's say that we are given M1 V1 initial theta one initial, oh, e one fine, B one final, and theta one final. So basically we're given all the information about mass one and its velocity, but we're given no information about mass two. So we want, so find M two, theta 2 final and v2 final. So we have three unknowns that we want to solve for. Okay, so because we're doing collisions and this is perfectly elastic, we know that momentum has to be conserved. So momentum initial equals momentum final. Now because this is a two-dimensional problem, we know that we can split our vectors into components and momentum is a vector so we can split it into components. And we know that the x momentum has to be conserved and we know that the y momentum has to be conserved. Okay, so the initial momentum in the x direction, m1 v1 initial x plus m2 v2 initial x equals m1 v1 final x plus m2 v2 final x. So we said that mass two was initially at rest so this term is going to go to zero. Then to get the x component of each of our velocities, we need to do some trigonometry. And if we do that, we get the following equation, m1, v1 initial cosine of theta one initial equals m1 v1 final cosine of theta 1 final plus m2 v2 final cosine of theta 2 final. Okay, 
And if we follow the same kind of procedure in the y direction, it'll look pretty similar. M1, V1, initial y. Yes. M2, V2, initial y. Plus M1, V1, final y. Plus M2, V2, final. Y. And the mass 2 was at rest to start with, so that term is going to go to 0. Breaking our vectors into components again, we'll get m1 v1 initial sine theta1 initial equals m1 v1 final sine of theta1 final plus m2 v2 final sine of theta2 final. Okay, so, and now to be careful about our directions, if we look back at our picture, our x components were all in the, if we say that this is our coordinate system where x is positive x is to the right and positive y is up then all of our x components are to the right but our initial velocity in the x direction for mass 2 and the final velocity for mass uh, sorry the initial velocity for mass 1 is negative and the final velocity for mass 2 is negative so in our y momentum equation, this term is negative and this term is negative. Okay. And the signs matter because momentum is a vector, so we have to keep track of what direction that vector is pointing. Okay. Now we wanted to solve for three unknowns, but we only have two equations. So we need to come up with some other equation to use. And the equation that we're going to use is conservation of energy. So because this is a perfectly elastic collision, momentum, uh, energy has to be conserved. So energy initial equals energy final. So one half m1 v1 initial squared plus one half m2 v2 initial squared equals one half m1 v1 final squared plus one half m2 v2 final squared. Now this Initial term was zero because there was no velocity for the for mass two initially, so it had no kinetic energy. And we can also cancel out all these one halves just to make our math easier. And so now we have three equations and we have three unknowns, so we can solve this. I'm gonna do it. Uh, just algebraically, you could do this using linear algebra if that's faster and you understand that better. Um, but I'm gonna do it algebraically. So the first kind of to outline my thought process, I don't wanna deal with the, so our unknowns were m2 v2 final and theta2 final. I don't want to have to deal with carrying a bunch of inverse trig functions around. So I'm going to solve for this last. And so now it's up to, you can solve them in whatever order you would prefer. I just prefer to solve for theta two final last. 
So I'm going to solve for theta 1 final first, or for m2 first, then I'm going to solve for b2 final, and then I'm going to solve for theta 2 final. OK. So I'm solving for m2 first. So that just means I'm picking one of my equations that has m2 in it, and I'm solving that equation for m2. So the equation that I'm picking is the one that we got from conservation of energy. So from that, we have m1 v1 initial squared equals m1 v1 final squared plus m2 v2 final squared. Um, and remember, I just canceled out all the one halves because the each term had a one half in it. So solving for m2, I would subtract the m1 v1 final squared term to the other side. And then to solve for m2, we can just divide by v2 final squared. I'm going to factor out an m1. So this is v1 initial squared minus v1 final squared over um, v2 final squared. So there's one of our variables that we solved for. Um, so now I need to take this uh, equation that we solved for M2 and plug it into both of our momentum equations. So I'm going to start in the x direction. So this is from momentum initial x equals momentum final x. So that equation looked like m1 v1 initial cosine theta 1 initial equals m1 v1 final cosine of theta 1 final plus m2 v2 final cosine theta 2 final. So we're going to replace this with the M2 that we solved for on the previous page. So that's M2 equals M1 times V1 initial squared minus V2, V1 final squared divided by V2 final squared. Okay, so plugging that in, we get the following. So the same equation as before, only now we're replacing the M2. So it looks like this. OK, so now we can do some cancellations. So now each term has an M1 in it, so we can cancel out all the M1 terms. And you'll see that there's a V2 final squared on the bottom and a V2 on the top of that term. So we'll just be left with a V2 final. And now we're solving this equation. Uh, I'll rewrite it and then we'll solve it. So after doing all those cancellations, this is what we're left with. Okay, now I'm going, to, I'm going to subtract this first term to the other side, so I get V1 initial cosine theta 1 initial minus 
one final, cosine theta one final equals b one initial squared minus b one final squared over b two final. Now I'm gonna cross multiply to get the v two final by itself. So v two final equals v one initial squared minus v one final squared divided by v one initial cosine theta one initial minus v one final cosine of theta one final. Okay. Oh, and it looks like I forgot to carry this cosine theta two final term through. So let's make sure we don't forget that. Okay. So now we have an equation where we've isolated V2 final. And now let's plug that into the y direction. So from momentum, so conservation of momentum in the y direction, we had this equation minus M1 V1 initial sine theta one initial equals M1 V1 final sine theta one final minus V2 final sine theta M2 V2 final sine theta two final. Okay, now there's two things that we have to replace in this equation. So we need to replace the M2 with the same thing that we replaced in the previous, in the X direction. And then we also need to replace V2 final. So M2 was M1 V1 initial squared minus M1 V1 final squared over V2 final squared. And then V2 final was M, I canceled out all the terms. So V1 initial squared minus V1 final squared cosine theta two final over V1 initial cosine theta one initial minus V1 final cosine theta one final. Okay, so we need to replace both of these variables. So let's start with the M2. So replacing that, we end up with this equation. Okay, so we can do the same kind of cancellations we did before where this V2 final cancels with one of the square V2 finals on the bottom and all the M1 terms cancel out. Um, so doing all that, you now have negative V1 initial sine theta one initial equals V1 final sine theta one final minus 
v1 initial squared minus v1 final squared sine theta 2 final over v2 final. Okay, so again, we need to replace the v2. which we'll do on the next page. So we had negative V1 initial sine theta one initial equals V1 final sine theta one final minus the quantity V1, V1 initial squared minus V1 final squared times sine of theta two final over V2 final. Okay, and we're replacing this and when we do that, it looks like this. Okay, so V2 final, we'll get a V1 initial squared minus V1 final squared on the denominator. We'll get a V1 initial cosine theta one initial minus V1 final cosine theta one final and then we had this um, sine theta two final on top and we'll have a cosine theta two final on the bottom. Okay so now these two terms are going to cancel each other and now let's get um, let's move this first term to the other side. We'll get negative V1 initial sine theta one initial minus V1 final sine theta one final. That's gonna equal negative V1 initial cosine theta one initial minus V1 final cosine theta one final, and then sine over cosine is tangent of theta two final. Now I'm gonna get rid of all of these minus signs. So if all the terms are, are minus one, we can uh, just make them all plus one instead. Okay. And so now we're solving for theta two final, so tangent of theta two final. So we'll just divide this V1 cosine, V1 final cosine term to the other side. So we'll get V1 initial sine theta one initial plus V1 final sine theta one final over V1 initial cosine theta one initial minus V1 initial or V1 final cosine theta one final. And so you'll see this looks pretty symmetric. Um, and then to get theta two final, we would just take the inverse tangent of both sides. So theta two final equals inverse tangent of V1 initial sine theta one initial plus V1 final sine theta one final over V1 initial 
cosine theta one initial minus B one final cosine theta one final. And so just to check, um, we were given the one initial and we were given the initial angle for mass one's velocity. We were given the final velocity for mass one and the angle for mass one's velocity. So all of these terms, uh, all of these variables are known. And so um, assuming we haven't made any algebra mistakes, uh, we've successfully found the angle. And so given some values to plug in, we could solve for the angle, the velocity, and the mass of uh, mass two. So let's do that. So let's say that we were given um, M1 is one kilogram, the one initial is five meters per second, theta one initial is 30 degrees, theta one final is 20 degrees, and B one final is two meters per second. And we wanted to find, so given these things, find theta two final, B two final, and M two. Okay, so let's do that starting with theta two final. So plugging in our known variables. So V one initial is five times sine of oops, 30 degrees plus two times sine of 20 degrees over five cosine of 30 minus two cosine of 20. And if you plug that into your calculator, you get that the angle for theta two final is 52.4. So if we go back and look at our picture, that 52.4 degrees is this angle below the horizontal. Okay, so we found one of our unknown variables. So now we'll just chain back through uh, the previous equations that we solved for and plug in the new variables that we found and the ones that were given. Okay, so now we have theta two final in addition to all of these given terms. Uh, so let's plug that in for this equation that we solved for V two final. Okay, so V two final we had solved for um, E one initial squared minus B one final squared cosine theta two final over V one initial cosine theta one initial minus V one final cosine theta one final. Okay. Now we're just plugging in those values that we were given and then also the theta two final that we just found. And that looks like this, five squared minus two squared, cosine of 52.4 degrees, five cosine 30 minus two cosine 20. And doing that, we get V2 final is 5.228 meters per second. 
Okay, so that's two uh, quantities that we wanted to find down. Uh, so let's get the third one. So M2, the equation that we had found for M2 was the following. M1 V1 initial squared minus M2 or M1 V1 final squared over V2 final squared. So plugging in our values, so the mass M1 was just one, velocity one initial is five, velocity one final was two, and velocity two final was 5.228 squared. So plugging that into your calculator, you get that M2 is 0 0.768 kilograms. Okay, so now we've used conservation of momentum and conservation of energy to solve a two-dimensional collision problem where you were given three unknown variables that you had to solve for. And now just to look back and see if this all makes sense. So if we were given those uh, values that we had, one, five, 30, 20, two, and we found 0 0.768, 52.4, and 5.228. So we found those variables. So let's see if that all makes good common sense. Um, for instance, in order for the velocity of mass two to be faster than the velocity of mass one, so the initial velocity of mass one was five. So the only way for uh, mass two's velocity to be bigger than mass one's initial velocity would be if mass two was smaller than um, mass one in mass. And then another thing uh, we can check is if the angle makes sense. Uh, so we found an angle of 52.4 degrees uh, below this horizontal, as that's how we had defined theta 2 final. Uh, so that makes sense. If we had uh, found the angle was uh, maybe negative, uh, indicating that the ball, instead of going down, had a y, or, yeah, y component, component of its velocity in the positive y direction, uh, that would be a clue that we probably uh, had an algebra mistake or there was a sign mistake somewhere in our uh, our math um, because then our we would have two y components to our velocity in the positive direction in the final picture and that isn't really how collisions work. So, uh, so it's good to, once you've solved a problem, to just go back and kind of um, check that the variables that you find make some kind of sense. Uh, and it's an easy way to pick up on, oh, I must have made a sign error or something in my algebra. This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Keep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.